Welcome Weavers! I am excited to present to you an excerpt from my book, Color and Texture for the Rigid Huddle Loom. One of the greatest challenges that my new weavers confront as they continue to grow their skills with the Rigid Huddle is what can I weave with? How do I get the yarn right for the loom and the reeds that I have? And I devote 32 pages of my book to color, fiber, resistance, gauge, and 12 teaching patterns as well to help answer that question. Here I'm presenting an excerpt regarding knitting yarns, gauge, and reed size. I've placed a few common weaving yarn weights under a corresponding category for knitting yarns here. You don't see knitting and weaving yarns cross-referenced very often, since these systems were not created with each other in mind. Yarn weight for knitters is about categorizing a range of yarns by diameter and how they perform on different size needles. So weight actually re refers to gauge here. Knitting yarns tend to be softer than weaving or cone yarns, as they generally have less spinning oil in them and they can be more loosely plied. The weaving yarn numbering system is more accurately a weight reference. It starts with yards per pound, Established in the 19th century, a base standard for a single strand of cotton was set at 840 yards per pound. That's the number one. From there, number two is 1,680 yards per pound, or twice the yardage. Number three is 2,520 yards per pound, three times the yardage, and so on. This standard was also applied to rayon and its subcategories like lyocell, which is tencel, and bamboo. The larger the number, the more yards in a pound, and the finer the strand. This weight is normally the first number in the pair. The second number is the number of plies. Wool and other animal fibers, linen and some types of silk, each have their own standard, which adds to the complexity. Throw blends into the equation, and the fact that some manufacturers will reverse the numbering system, and you can see that this can be a bit mind-boggling. Additional detail on weaving yarns is outside the scope of this book, and generally outside what is useful for garment weaving on the rigid huddle. Unless you want to double the finer yarns or use them as weft for a lighter weight fabric. I sometimes choose cone yarns for plant-based fibers when I want a lighter weight smooth thread to mix in with my knitting yarns, either as warp or weft. They play a suitable role in the background to lessen the weight of a fabric. They may also be more economical and lighter gauge plant fibers can be harder to find among knitting yarns. Otherwise, I tend to leave the cone yarns to those who focus on producing home goods, tapestries, and functional items where larger quantities, stronger plies, and more bodied fabric are desirable. Moving on to warp set standards and deviations. Getting the reed size right is one of our greatest challenges. As you grow your skills, matching dent to yarn will be more obvious. Still, there are times when the assumptions of even the most experienced turn out wrong. The first few inches of your weaving should be examined to determine if the fabric has stability and is what you intended. If you have the wrong reed size, don't be afraid to unravel, untie, and transfer the warp to a different one. Unweaving is substantially faster than weaving. My YouTube video, Rescues for Rigid Heddle Weavers, demonstrates a way to transfer the ends safely as they must be kept in order when you do this. For garment creation, I like to keep an eye on stability, but I strive to keep some air in there as well. I want to avoid beating too tightly and winding up with the equivalent of a gunny sack in the end. Balance where the warp set is close to the number of weft picks is sought after for great drape. If you have an 8-dent reed, beating to 8 picks per inch is balanced. Even if you come close, say 8 EPI ends per inch by 12 PPI picks per inch, 
you're probably still going to get good drape with a soft yarn. The word beat, by the way, is often a misnomer when your real intention might be a loving tap to place one pick next to the other. Further, I advise against beating the same pick multiple times because you're more likely to create stiff fabric and frowning edges. These are salvages that sink when beating from various directions. For reed size, the way we look at matching knitting gauge yarns to reed size is typically the 12 dent is for sock, sport, some lace if it's sticky or resistant, the 10 dent, great for DK, the 8 dent for worsted, Aran. I use many DK yarns at this set. 5 dent is for chunky, bulky, super bulky if it fits. Not so fast though. I like to put warp in three general categories for the beat. First is sticky yarn. This can be wool that is woolen spun. In other words, prepared and spun from fibers of different lengths going in different directions. Textured yarns create a drag on your weft to slow down the beat and allow a wider set. Yarns with no or low elasticity are resistant to the beat, like cellulose fibers or many silk varieties. Then we have slippery yarns, such as worsted spun, not to be confused with worsted gauge, which are smooth, same length fibers prepared to go in the same direction. Since worsted or woolen spun are not normally on the label, you'll have to use your sense of touch to judge. Looking at the small incremental difference between 8, 10, and 12 dent reeds, I consider the 10 dent the middle guy to put more air into the fabric of sticky or resistant sport gauge yarns, for example, or to stabilize and tighten slippery worsted gauge yarns. Note that rayon can be resistant when tightly plied due to its delayed elasticity, but its slick surface is slippery when loosely plied, as with most rayon in knitting yarns. As always, sample, sample, sample. I have a YouTube video for that too. It's Test Warp on the Rigid Huddle Loom. I hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from Color and Texture for the Rigid Huddle Loom. If you'd like a free pattern to sample from the book, go to my website, www.pawstudio.com.